that's how we're going to do, huh? You're just going to only want to come see me when I'm shooting a video, huh? You don't want anything to do with me all morning until I come in here. She gets a little jelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm talking to you. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Good morning, Sheba. Would you like to do the intro to my video for me? Huh? No? Okay. You don't want to help? No, because we're gonna we're shooting a video on orchids today, sheeps. It's gonna be a good one. You sure you don't want to help? Huh? No. I guess that's her answer. Okay, so back to that. Hello and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. My name's Bobby, and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Doing that again, huh? Yeah? That's, that's what we're gonna continue to do? Every time. Good morning, Shiva. Daddy's gonna shoot a video, okay? Yeah? Every time I put the camera on the stand, she decides she wants to come in here, so. Good morning and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. So it is a beautiful sunny day. Things are changing and um, we're going to take another walk around, look around. Some people have asked me for some updates on some things and I am going to go ahead and do my best to provide those for everybody today. Um, lots to look at and it's really nice in here with the natural light right now. You guys get to see the true green of all these things I keep here in the tent. Um, the lights are great but they do, in my opinion, take away from the natural beauty of things. So whenever possible, I do try to shoot in here in natural light just so you guys can get a real sense of the actual sun and how it works for me in my grow tent and how I utilize it to grow indoors with the assistance of my grow lights. So here we go. Let's go ahead and I'll get the camera off this stand here and we'll go ahead and start looking around. I've got lots to show you guys. So this is my Angracum Pseudophilicornu, and it was growing really, really nicely here until I was stupid and somehow got water in the crown of this plant. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to zoom in. But that red spot right there at the top of this plant, that is actually cinnamon. I had to pull off the first leaf, pull it out of the stem, and I packed it down with cinnamon in the hopes that it would stop the crown rot from killing this entire plant. Um, I am losing a leaf down here right now, which I don't think is as a result of this. I did take it as a lesson. This plant really does not want to get water on it at all. Um, I've got it mounted pretty much bare rooted here with just a little bit of Spanish moss hanging off of it. And um, I am just hoping now that it produces some sort of a side shoot because if it doesn't then ultimately oh, let me turn that off right in our face <laughs> oh goodness so i'm hoping um like i said that this gets a side shoot and rejuvenates this plant otherwise this thing is doomed i might have to get another one it has an awesome flower i was super stoked and really happy to get this in my collection but I messed up using the sprayer running around here like a madman because I have not had the time to do things the right way so that is 
and Greycomb Pseudo Filicornu and again hopefully I didn't kill it. Um, good news in the Falparitii department. This put out some beautiful flowers this spring for the first time and immediately following that it put out this little weird stunted leaf. I'm hoping you can see that down there. Stunted, deformed, and I was really worried. I thought maybe this thing was a goner. And to my surprise and happiness, here is the latest growth that it pushed out. And it is its best leaf yet. It really is a nice, strong, healthy growth. I'm hoping it follows up with another one and keeps up with this pattern. I did remount it. I'm hoping maybe this was just some sort of a shock from the remounting or whatever, but that is the Falparitii, Falnopsis parishii species and it is recovering, it's doing really well. So, it's really hard to talk about success and progress without showing off the Catacetum shunkii that I did mount. Um, Stephen Van Kemp and Lewis, he had asked for a update on this plant. Stephen, it's doing great, man. I think, at least. It grew a really nice growth. It's got lots and lots of roots. I was able to keep it moist enough and I didn't have any bad or negative results. Um, really, really healthy looking plant, and I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Maybe, Steven, you can help me. I've spoken to Brenda. She thinks this is a spike. It's backlit. You're never going to see that. Get with it, Bobby. But I think it's producing a spike, and I'm really, really excited to see what happens with this. I hope it hangs in there. I don't know if it's the right time of year or not for this to be blooming, but... It sure does seem like it wants to try. So it hangs right up in the window with its back to the window and gets some pretty bright light throughout the morning. And um, it is doing really, really nicely again. I know I'm going to be cutting off the water here sooner than later. I'm looking for signs of the leaves to deteriorate. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and start this off with its dry rest. But I am very excited to see this thing potentially going to bloom for me. It'll be the first catacetum blooms that we see in here. It's my first catacetum, so the leaves are awesome. They're kind of textured, like warty almost. Really neat. Really neat little plant. Love this thing. Um, moving slightly to the left, this is our Brassavola subulifolia, and it has a nice spike forming. It's got at least three or four flowers on it. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be awesome. Forming up nicely, it is growing right to the window. I did pluck the spike off of our Brassavola Regina. I did not feel comfortable letting this thing bloom again. It already bloomed off of this earlier and it was a beautiful show. I left it on too long anyway. And this plant is not the healthiest. It only has a couple roots. I decided to sacrifice the blooms to see if we can push out more growth and get this plant healthier and stronger for next year because it bloomed once already, it tried to bloom again, so I think it's in its, uh, you know, it, it's in its happy place. It wants to bloom. So we're going to go ahead and let it just grow on and be strong and go from there. Um, the Tolumnias, they're well on their way. The spike is from all the way down there, and this one is coming up nicely. I might actually pluck this one off. It only looks like it's going to have two blooms on it. These fans are rather small. And I'd rather see strength get back into this plant. We got to enjoy it once earlier this year. And this one's another one that's on the chopping block. I think it's going to get sacrificed. And that is the pretty red one. But this one is yellow and red. And it is phenomenal. It's actually a really strong spike. It looks like it has at least four or five buds on it. It could even have a branch forming. So I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and let this one be my Tolumnias for, for the time being. Um turning around just a bit more. This is our BL Yellowbird that we've been monitoring and I am pleased to say shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm really excited about this one. This plant has been kind of a pain. It has really taken some time to get itself established in my place and even attempt to do this so I'm excited. Looks like we're gonna have three flowers on this and they really are awesome. Our tried and true and faithful Dyneema polybulbin has really put on some good size since I put it on this big mount. 
It is growing all over the place, and I am pleased to say it looks like it's going to put out several blooms for us here in the near future. It's got sheaths all over the place that are pushing out what appear to be the beginnings of buds. So we should have a nice blooming from this thing in the next month or so, um, maybe two at most. Hopefully down here, through here, and I'm just excited to see how much strength it's gotten because I don't know if you guys remember how big it was before but it has probably doubled in size again. This thing is awesome. It is one of my favorite orchids. It grows really well in this environment. It's easy grower and I highly recommend it to anybody who wants to try a vining and mat forming rambling species that has really nice little orange flowers that do actually have a fragrance, a really nice fragrance, but not a powerful fragrance. You've got to get right up on them. The um, brass of, oh, ah, the, sorry, the Brassia Jipijapensis. This plant is absolutely getting ginormous. This is this year's growths from spring into summer, and they are all producing growths of their own now that are taking up the upper portion of this mount. And man, when I tell you this thing is huge, it is really big. It's probably almost two and a half feet across. And from the bottom leaf down here to up here, that's probably another almost two feet. It's huge. It will not bloom. I am doing everything I can to get it more light. It, it's moved up and up and up. and over 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 <laughs> it just gets closer and closer to the window so soon enough it's going to be eating up some other valuable real estate but um for now we're letting it do its thing i am going to let this get kind of dry this winter um i know it sounds strange for a brassia but this one is a strange brassia i'm thinking that there's some cultural issues i have it certainly is not doing what it should be doing so I looked it up, it's from an area that's very dry and almost desert-like scrubland. Um, so I've been tracking some weather patterns and things like that down there. And I do feel like perhaps it needs to be a little bit drier than I've been keeping it. It's a happy plant, but I'm just hoping to see some blooms. It definitely is large enough to bloom. It should be blooming. Um, I have to get this maxillaria out of our way and I'll be back. So, down here, we've got our Miltonia phimatochyla. And this thing is still in spike, growing out of control. Followed up from the bottom, up, 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 up a little more. It is all the way up here now. So, we're looking at almost two foot long, and still going still going strong so <laughs> it's coming up over the brassia here it's going to end up coming up somewhere in here and i am very excited actually i think it's going to be really neat to see i cannot wait to see how many flowers it actually does end up putting on this spike um really big news the encyclia bractescens down here it's growing on its new growths one two the third one here I had the same issue with as I had with the leaf before it and it's starting to rot back but it's at a higher point than the last one. I didn't have to sever it down right at the bulb. So I believe they still have all three a chance of spiking. Um, they're doing okay, plugging along. I just think it needs to get a change. I, I don't know what to do with this one. It might be put back into a pot come spring. I really don't know. Um, right next door, the Dendrobium rhodostictum. It is pushing on two really healthy, larger new growths. It's starting a few more, I think at least one, down at the base down here. You guys can't see it, but take my word for it. It's got another one coming on down here. And really, at this point, I am just waiting for this thing to bloom. Um, I'm hoping it's happy enough. It's definitely turning into a nice sized plant. It's healthy, it's got roots, but it's not blooming. So maybe it's a light issue. The leaves are a little dark. I don't know. I know they're a little sensitive, but perhaps it needs to get slid over just a bit more um, or moved up, perhaps. I'm not sure. 
but that is doing well. It's growing nicely, at least, and I'm very excited about that. Um, the Dendrochylum Wenzelii that we got and mounted, it is pushing on one, two, three, four, five new growths. So it is happy. It's adjusted pretty nicely. You can see the new growths down here. They're the shorter ones. They're progressing along. And I'm excited. I hope this thing blooms. I really do. I would love to see these flowers in here. Um, sliding this over a bit, our Bulbophyllum lepidum, the one that I unfortunately missed the blooms of, I have good news. It has decided, I don't know if you can see behind my finger there, to throw out another spike. So we are going to have another round of Bulbophyllum lepidum. I'm not going to forget this time. <laughs> you guys will definitely be able to see it live. And hopefully we can watch the little lips wiggle together because this was a really cool one. Really neat. I've got this computer fan right here that blows air across this whole shelf. And these really did bounce around like crazy. They were awesome. Is there any other big news? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Our other Bulbophyllum that we're looking at is actually stuck back here, so you guys are going to have to give me a moment. I will get this thing out and we'll take a look at it. This is our Bulbophyllum Lassiocolum Var Black, and it's got a awesome, awesome bud forming. I'm starting to see it's flipping over, so they come out upside down. And they turn right side up before they open up and that is exactly what this one's doing it's about halfway there so a couple more days sometime this coming week this should be open and I'll make sure to come back and we can take a look at this thing together but it's doing great this mount is really starting to get matured it's got moss and everything growing on it it looks really natural and I just can't wait to get some good pictures of this plant it's such a beautiful bloom I really do enjoy it. I just need its buddy back here. You can see how strongly it's shadowed in this shot. This one gets a lot more sun than its counterpart back there, the regular variety. So I think that's the solution. I think I'm going to get them both a little bit brighter next year somehow, move some stuff around, and that way we'll be able to see both of these side by side and be able to compare. So that is Bulbophyllum lassiocolum the dark variety and um, it's coming soon. Our little hair yellow odorata is still in bloom. The next bud is pushing on nicely and the spike next to it is still extending believe it or not so this thing's gonna start getting drier. It likes a little bit of a winter rest. I gotta move it up, give it some brighter light. I usually do that in the winter time as well. But for now, we still have it to enjoy. I love this little flower. Such a cool little bloom. Man in the hat. <laughs> um, below it, I have my Kylokista javanica. And this was my first of this type. And I'm proud to say, I didn't know what it was doing for a while. I thought it might have just been a dead pile of roots I strapped to bark. Um, they do green up every time I water them, but if you see the, the lighter green extensions on the left and on the bottom and towards the lower right those are all new roots so it has finally started growing I do think it might like the cooler temperatures so it might have been struggling a bit trying to get acclimated in the summertime when it was nice and warm every day but now that it's cooling off it really does seem like it's doing a lot better so hoping to see nice progress throughout the winter on this and potential blooms next year because I love these plants I need to get a few more of them I think I have space. <laughs> um, yeah, looking down a little further, we'll look through the green. So this is my little Porpax Ustulata. This thing is a weirdo. It is basically dead most of the year, and it springs back to life, and I did not expect it to spring back to life like this. When I got it, I mean, I spent a few months debating whether or not I just needed to throw it away and give up on it. It goes fully dormant. It's getting to be about that time of year. I'm hoping to see some blooms on this thing, but I do not know when it blooms. This is my first year growing it, and it is a very odd orchid. Not a whole lot of information on this plant. So that is it. I showed you guys a while back when it first started growing, 
and now it is just a little bush of green. I'm waiting to see the little red flowers or for it to go dormant. Whatever happens first, but exciting either way. All of our different Drosseras, Pinguiculas, they're all doing fantastic for all you carnivorous plant lovers. All my uh, little divisions have worked. My leaf pulling divisions have created more of this guy. I think I've got three growing back here in this pot with him now. And then down here, all of our little seedlings or divisions, whatever, have pushed on quite nicely. Our little tiny ones have gotten bigger and our bigger ones have gotten way bigger. So I'm counting on this one to be the first one to bloom. I just don't know when. I don't know if it's happy enough. Hopefully this year. And these Drosera, these are going to have to get split up. The Banata, I mean, it's just going nuts. All of its... Let me get down here a little bit more. But all of its arms just lay over. They invade everything around it. I've got to get this out of this little pot. I mean, it's invading my mica, it invades my neophonesia, it invades the lelia, it invades the everything. It just invades everything. So I've got to figure out something with those. They are awesome. I am in no way going to get rid of them. Oh, son of Look at that. Ugh. Wow. God damn. Anyway, they invade everything, and um, I need to do something about that very, very soon. Oh, well, I was going to give you guys an update on this plant anyway, so I just killed it. Um, <laughs> this was my Miltoniopsis vexillaria. God damn. And I broke it off. That was the newest growth, so... This plant is probably done. Oh well. Um, wasn't very happy. Uh, the other growth rotted off here. And yeah, this is done. So I just killed it. <laughs> wow. Come learn how to grow orchids here at Cloud Forest Vibes with Bobby and he will teach you how to sit on them when he gives you a greenhouse tour. That is what we do. Neat. Well, I am gonna go ahead and wrap my tour up there. I did notice as I was uh, picking apart the mount that the Miltoniopsis was on because I just did it right away. Um, there was some orange rot, some orange bacterial rot that had set in at the base of the plant. I don't think it was much longer for this world anyway. All the roots were dead um, it was just not a happy plant, so gonna have to see if I can't find a more warmth tolerant one or one that comes in a little better condition, I guess. It, it, I left it in the pot too long and before I put it on the mount and it just was not happy. Um, anyhow, gonna close out the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed all my progress and bumbling around my greenhouse today, so... <laughs> Um, thank you as always for tuning in and watching. I'm going to try to shoot a couple more quick videos today and show you guys various things. I have some stuff going on in the tank I'd like to show you guys and I'm also going to do some maintenance. I think I'm going to try to divide up the Drosera and a few other things today. I'll get that on film and um, go from there. So thanks again. I hope you guys are all staying safe. Please continue to stay safe. And um, I will see you guys next time. Happy growing.